Welcome back everyone. Today we are checking out the new 2022 FX Sport line. Now this is different from the FX line in general. The FX Sport is a carbon fiber gravel, as they're saying, commuter adventure bike. It's kind of a weird little category. They're really pushing this gravel kind of roll that's going. Everybody's into the gravel running. Everyone's into gravel bikes. The checkpoints are nearly impossible to get. And now they've released the FX, which is it just a straight bar checkpoint? Let's look into it. So what are some of the big differences between this model and say the checkpoint? If they're comparing it as a gravel fitness bike, what makes this different? Overall, they're similar in many ways. FX Sport comes with a carbon fiber frame. This makes it extremely lightweight, very stiff, but also a comfortable ride. Add that with a bit of a shorter stack height and a better reach. This now is a very comfortable, not upright, but upright sitting gravel bike. You have up to 40C tires on this, so a very commendable size. Without fenders, it can go up to 45. So you're getting huge range in there, just as you would with any gravel bike. And that is key. They're really trying to take this city slicker of a kind of bike, which it has been the FX, and broaden its scope to become what is the craze of gravel riding right now. The FX Sportline comes in three different models, the four, five, and six. I'm not really sure why they started with those numbers because it is different from all the other FXs, but it kind of keeps them in line at the same time with those FXs, yet they don't advertise those as a gravel ready. They are more the urban ready. When you go to that curb, that is a big difference when you go to that carbon fiber frame. You're able to get a bigger tire clearance to it. Going to the Sport Series gets a bigger tire clearance and allows you to fit more tire in there. And that's really what's differentiating the FX Sport from the FX line. You go from urban to gravel fitness because you can do all the in-town stuff on it. It's not got the most aggressive gravel tire on it, but it gives you the clearance to allow for a very aggressive one if you want. With gravel riding, they generally are doing wider handlebars with a scoop on it with the down lows. With this one, you're just getting that FX style flat bar. Comfort grips, overall a very upright, comfortable bike. And unless you're racing, I don't know if you really need the drops to win the sprint or anything like that. If you're just going on those gravel adventure rides, getting in the higher kilometers, do it more recreational for fitness, let's say, then you're able to do that with this bike and be in an upright comfy position the entire time. It might be a nice little niche category where someone wants to get into this sport of riding bikes and doing the gravel rides, which are becoming more and more popular, but they're not really into the whole road biking scene. This now gives them the capability to do that. Price-wise in Canadian, you are jumping from about $1,700 all the way up to $2,600. So these are some high priced kind of category bikes. If you look at a gravel bike, they're pretty affordable. You know, the checkpoint starts at $3,000 Canadian. So this is all lower than that. Is that the entry level three now? Kind of sounds like it. The way the checkpoints used to go with the AL series you used to get a cheaper aluminum frame and nowhere near the tire clearances and they call it the checkpoint. Maybe now the entry level FX sports where they're leaning for everyone into this activity who isn't ready to get in the drops. As I said, all three of these are a carbon fiber frame. They are 400 series carbon. So very lightweight, really stiff, really responsive. Overall will absorb a lot of vibration in the gravel, which is key. Aluminum does not absorb a lot of vibration, so it can really get rattly over time. Going to carbon fiber makes for a much comfier ride. With it being the FX line, you do get obviously all the hidden racks and mount positions, so you can fully fenderize this, fully rack it out, and have it as a full-time commuter if you want, but keep it all clean or put those on and do a gravel race anyway, or more of a long-term adventure potentially, and you still have that ability with the FX Sport. The rims on the first two models, the four and the five, are the aluminum ones, which is great, tubeless ready, you can set it up if you want, doesn't come out of the box. The top level one does come with carbon fiber rims, the Aeolus, which is one of Bontrager's highest and most high-performing rims. Obviously, they've got the XXX race line, but 
the Aeolus is going to cut down probably a pound, pound and a half off the bike again. So you can really make this a really lightweight bike, getting rid of those tubes, getting a carbon fiber frame, getting the carbon fiber rims and make it just an astoundingly light commuter slash gravel bike. Like I said, all of them come with that comfort grip, which is nice. And then this drivetrain between them is pretty similar, but a little bit different. In the Sport 4, you were getting a 10-speed DR, which as you know, is a very well used, a very well liked among many brands, many bikes, many kind of genres of biking. This one goes on mountain bikes, road bikes, everything. It is one of the most versatile kits out there with an excellent range. On the five and the six, you are getting the 11 speed GRX specific drivetrain, which is essentially just the GRX Dior in an 11 speed. They just take away as much plastic as they can, make it as clean as possible. That way dirt, debris doesn't build up, doesn't catch into it, easy to clean, less chance of a rock chipping a piece of plastic because a lot of that plastic is just for show, it doesn't really do anything other than that. Obviously being carbon fiber bikes, they're lightweight to begin with. There is things you can do to make them even lighter, but right out of the box, the Sport 4 is 23 pounds or just under, and the Sport 6 is 21 pounds or just under 21 pounds. It is pretty fantastic how this lightweight of a bike comes straight out of the box, ready to ride. Most interestingly, the Sport 4 comes with a 40 tooth front chain ring and the 5 and a 6 both come with a 40. I don't really get why. In a way, I'd almost lean towards saying that the 5 and the 6 should get the 42 because you might be stronger, faster, want more speed out of this drivetrain and the entry level one would have the smaller ring. But that might just be the capabilities of going to that GRX setup. I'm not 100% sure. So should you buy this if you're looking for a gravel bike? Honestly, I think so. It could be a really good entry level start set for you. Obviously for the racing, you can't get into that really tuck geometry that you would with drop bars, but they've made a nice little build up into it where you may be coming from your entry level mountain bike and you've decided mountain bike is my thing. I really just like getting out there, getting on the gravel and covering ground. Well, this wheel setup, this frame setup is going to cover a lot more ground than any mountain bike ever could. With that, you're allowed to go anywhere you want on the gravel, anywhere where a checkpoint would go. And even through trails or more technical stuff, you'll actually be in a little more control than you would comparing like a checkpoint would. It'd be a little harder to control just with the controls, the controls on the bike. We're saying control a lot here, but it would be harder to control the bike in harder to control situations just comparing the kind of drop bars to the flat bars. It is a much more natural feeling position, easier to shift, easier to break, everything works a little bit, just mentally easier, and it's more gripped on the handlebars as opposed to the drops, you kind of click them from the side, breaking like this, everything just works a lot better. So realistically, it might be easier in some more technical gravel routes. Again, the drop bars just mean you're not going to be in the fastest, most ergonomic or speed aerodynamic wise position. And that's where the downside might be. But at that point, now, okay, hold on. At that point, that means you might be ready to sell this or keep this as your backup and go to the upgraded checkpoints. Hopefully this helps you out and clarifies a little bit. They are fantastic bikes, crazy lightweight. And I think a lot of people are going to like them.